Hello, it's Sarah, and today I'm working on these wooden ATCs that I bought. I got these at Hobby Lobby, and I've already um, sealed them. They're, they're wood, so it's a porous surface, and when you put paint on, it can, um, you know, it'll change the, it'll suck the paint down into the wood, so you just want to put a block, a, a, um, a barrier. So I sealed them all with, um, I use Josonia clear oh no I don't I don't use that where is it I put it away already anyway I sealed it and I've already prepped everything these two are going to be just like the um, Tracy Moreau, Moreau pieces that I already share these I'm going to do the dragonfly and the bee on ATC cards, which is artist trading cards. They're two and a half by three and a half. And then these two are sugar skulls. And I just wanted to share the, the background. So this is one of the ways Tracy does a background with a stencil. I painted it black. I sealed it painted black and gave it a fine sanding. And then I stenciled and I didn't have the colors that she had. <laughs> um, <clears throat> watermelon, Bahama Blue, and Margarita. I only use two colors because it's a much smaller surface. The one that she did it on is um, a phone stand, so it's much bigger. So I shrunk the pattern down. And so I figured two colors was a good enough variation. I just grabbed whatever I thought was margarita and, uh, <laughs> what is it, watermelon slice. But I like it. And I did it kind of, uh, <clears throat> she said to, to uh, leave some make it like a distressed look and leave some blank too so I really like how it turned out and then I just traced the pattern on with a uh, gray graphite or white graphite I'm not sure now this one was kind of cool too and I like the background but I'm gonna cover most of it up because again I shrunk the pattern down so basically I just put it in my uh, <clears throat> my printer and I uh, reduce the pattern so here's the original size of the dragonfly here's the um, this is a sh original let's see see this is the shrunken down dragonfly so you can reduce the size so I reduced this to 75 percent so I think that's what I used I'm gonna um where is it this one this one I think I might have used this one to trace I'm not sure I think I actually did the 80 percent they're around here. I've already done that, so I kind of I get rid of what I don't need as I go. <clears throat> but to do this background, I based it with Bahama Blue, which is this light blue. And then I took Prussian Blue, which is this color. And it's very subtle, and I don't think you'll be able to see it at all, pretty much, because I reduced it. There's very little that shows. Um, I just kind of... I used glazing medium and made a wash of the of the Prussian blue and then blotted it off with um, the shop towel so see here's the color so that I kind of just like blotted it like that and it looked so cool but anyway that's gonna mean it's gonna get covered up pretty much and then these two the ones that I did like this um, all I did was kind of slip slap some um, light ivory in the background so it's a tiny, you can tell it's a little whiter than the wood. And then I just covered both pieces with uh, Mod Podge and some of the Tim Holtz Postal, I think it's called. The tissue paper. And I'm going to, I just let that dry. So that's ready to go um, to be, I'm going to color the background for that. But I just wanted to share these two because I'm going to, I've been, I'm just going to skip around and do these. I think they're, they're going to work up pretty quick. The other thing I wanted to say was, um, for this uh, sugar skull, right, this one here, you see all the detail on there? I didn't trace any of that onto the pattern yet because I'm going to coat the whole skull in first with warm white. She says I'm just going to use, um, this is laid ivory. I'm just going to paint the whole skull with light ivory, then I'll apply the detail lines. And um, actually, I should have the eyeballs on here. That's one thing. I'm going to add these little eyeballs. 
And all you do, I'll just show you what I do. So I should be able to see through this a little bit to get the pattern. But basically, I just line it up with the outside edge. Like when I trace these from the tracing, I just drew the outside of these little wood pieces. And I'm going to just line it up with the edges. That's how I centered the design on here. So it's a little tricky, but for right now, there's no details on here, so I'm close enough. I just moved it a teens, okay? And then I use, this is what I mean by gray graphite or white graphite. And you slide this under, so because when you're doing it on a black background, and then I need to find my stylus. I'll just use this stylus. But I want to get the eyes because they're not going to get painted white because flowers are poking through. And I think some of the background will poke through. And even though I, oh, and the nose. Even though I traced all the details onto my tracing pattern, I don't need them yet. So I'll come back in and apply, I'm just making sure it's there, yeah. And apply those after, so I'm gonna come in and you can see, you can't even see what I'm doing, see? So, like, this, my printer's running out of ink, so I don't have, like, a good picture to show you, a good reference. Um, but see, the whole thing, and then you color in the, de uh, the details after. So I'm gonna color in all that. So this one has roses under it, and this one just has like half his jaw is missing, which I love. OMG. I'm so excited to get these done. So I think I'll come back and show you them finished. I could do a little painting. Why don't we paint a little bit? I'll just go in and do this while I have you here. I'm just putting out some light ivory, and I'm going to use a small flat brush to base coat. You can use a number three round as well, but if I have a small flat, this is a filbert. I don't, I mean, I, I could definitely use a filbert, but I don't like to mess up my filberts because um, I'm going to use a number three round. I think I'll be able to do it. Um, and I get a little water in my brush, and then I'm just loading my brush with paint. And I like to do two thinner, um, two thin coats rather than one thicker gloppy coat. That's just how I like to do it. And I don't like, he has a little bump on his head. I'm just gonna get rid of that tracing line and kinda, now there's gonna be flowers up here so I don't have to really worry about it. But see how all that pretty background's going away? I'm gonna cover it up. Um, and this should be opaque. And that's just, my preference because I mean we could make it clear but what how many skulls have you seen that are see-through see if I had a chiseled brush right now I'd be able to get that really straight but a round is going to help me get in between these eyeballs um, I did just order just a couple brushes uh, the ones that Tracy recommends they're by Dynasty and they're actually faux squirrel. And I was, my husband and I walk, and we were walking and I saw squirrels and it reminded me, I'm like, I never would have thought of using the squirrel's fur to make a brush. But, I mean, they have those bushy tails. And if you're, you know, you're eating squirrel, you might as well use the rest of them and get some crafting in there too. It's just amazing to me the resources, the things that people think of to use. Um, and I, it is a faux squirrel, so it's not like it's a real squirrel, but what makes a squirrel's fur desirable to do to, to make a brush? I don't know. The texture and the, the way it lays together, the way the fur I have no idea. I've, I don't think I've ever been that up close and personal with a squirrel. I mean, as close as they'll let you get because we used to have a squirrel that would come to our back door. I used to call him Tippy because he would tippy toe so close to me and I could hand him a peanut. 
he would take it from my hand. And then one day Tippy never came back. So I don't know what happened to Tippy. But I love animals, but I think they are a great resource. So I can't really see my line over here. But guess what? It's fine. Hopefully you guys can see it. I'm going to add a little more water to my brush. I like the paint to slide off the bristles. I don't want to pull it and it's too sticky and it doesn't move. That's not... And I don't like this brush. My brushes are so... They're in really bad shape. I'm embarrassed of my brushes. I don't want that to be like too pointy. And again, this is Tracy's design. Tracy Morrow, she designed this little guy. But I'm tweaking them as I go. I mean, obviously it's not going to be exactly, I mean, to the best it can be it is. But it's just, you know, it can't be perfect, perfect. Does that look good? I think it looks scully. I missed a part over here. It's a skull. So, you know, I don't want one eye to be bigger than the other, but it might be if it's a skull. That looks pretty good. I love that I can see the background through it. Although, you know, the back of the skull would be there. You wouldn't really be able to see through it, right? But this isn't real life. Maybe there's a hole in the back of his skull. I think it looks cool. And then these are all... I have to figure out what colors I'm going to use because um, I don't have a lot of the colors that she's using like this. I told you, um, watermelon slice. I have, I have the Bahama Blue. I don't have margarita. So I'm going to have to figure out what. Now the other thing I was going to do is this guy. i got to find the pattern for this guy. And I think, all right, you know what, I'll come back when I have all, everything all based, and I'll just start shading, and it, it's going to look so cool, OMG, all right, I'll be back. So I'm basing this in, and I just wanted to share, when I'm using a flat, and this is not even a good flat, it's so much easier because you have that chiseled edge to run right along the like look I'm about to go up into this flower section and just gently as long as the the paint on your brush is wet I can get really crisp lines no ridges. I personally, I don't like ridges and bumps. So my second coat should come up all the more uh, smooth. But um, at first, and I've seen people actually sand in between coats, maybe with like a paper bag or a super fine sandpaper. Um, I don't know that that's that necessary or if it actually really works but like getting it in between that's why it's kind of like nice to maybe if I would have just done a skull and then traced on the flowers after it would be easier than going around all the details that's what I was talking about um, on the skull now I I also did thought as I'm doing this I substituted what was it? I think it was warm white she suggested using and I'm thinking is light ivory actually a warm white and I don't know I think maybe ivory or even antique white might have been a little closer to warm white but I'm not positive I do have a conversion book and it is helpful to have one of those if you um, or into decorative painting because then there's a lot of different um, options you can look in your conversion book and see what other brand is similar to that color 
So for warm white, it might be she's she's using um, Americana. Warm white might be the exact color, but in a different brand, it might be called something different. You know what I mean. And it's close enough, is, is my opinion. It's a skull. We know skulls are white-ish, right? Bones, right? But if it's old, and it might be a little more um, antique looking, warm white is not white. It's just definitely not straight white like we know that anywho painting is so I like I'm lulling myself to sleep <laughs> it's so restful so it looks like yeah the skull comes up over here hopefully I'm in the shot I don't even know let me peek up yes um and there's flowers and then before I finish or do the flowers I have to pick my colors so I have to definitely see what the color she chooses look like or pick whatever flower colors I want because that's what she said change the palette and it might be based on just what I have or what my favorite colors are because it doesn't it's not gonna matter in the big picture right it's just flowers alright so now this has like a kind of a toothy looking gummy area here so it's kind of swervy and you just kind of swerve it in there and I'm gonna let this dry but I'm thinking I might do my second coat with a little bit of a different color because when I shade this, well I'm going to shade it with asphaltum which is a brown and I don't think that's going to make a difference but maybe highlighting. Let's see if we highlight it. Floats of thin Prussian blue. Oh I got to put thin Prussian blue in, in the eye sockets as well. Um, I did the pearls already. See how the pearls are base coated? And let's see what we're going to highlight. Shade under the flowers with asphaltum and that's it. It doesn't have us highlighting. Let's see if we highlight the pearls. Shade each pearl and highlight with white. So I do want the white to show up. So let me see, like for instance, I might have antique white. What is this? Buttermilk. So see the difference? I don't really like this. I think I'd rather have it be just, this is light ivory, so I'll bet you ivory might be better. So I might dig around and see about that and put the second coat on both of these um, in that way. Now, the other ATCs I'm going to do right here, we're going to apply the color, kind of, I'm going to go back up, kind of similar to when I would do, up, oh, charge the battery. Hopefully we're still, yeah, we're still recording. I can just plug in my... Um, adapter thing all right it's charging um i'm gonna use a part of this towel to apply the colors to these so i'm gonna go yellow um pink fuchsia purple and this is what color did i use because i did it yesterday so i need the purple i need the fuchsia I think it's the Bahama blue and the yellow. Did I put the yellow away? There it is, it fell out of the sky. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of each of those out on my palette and show you how we get that effect. Just like you would do with your Tim Holtz Distress Inks, you know, um, gently because she actually uses the media fluid acrylics and I don't have them. So I really want, I want this to be, and I think the thing that, the, that those guys are loving about them is they're so highly pigmented. So even if you water, water it down, it comes out really bright color. All right, so let me just take this. I'm going to wet it. 
so that I can kind of water down the color a little bit and start in the corner over here with some yellow and then go into the fuchsia oh, my fuchsia touched the yellow and made it orange I want it to be orange up here so I'll go over that again so I gotta move my color I can't so I'm gonna go into purple and finally blue or whatever colors you like I want to take it off a little bit so that looks cool this looks a little more red than fuchsia I'm going to take another piece of shop towel and I'm actually going to wet it and fold it instead of just balling it up and I'm going to start this one and see if it makes a difference because I'm being a little more purposeful boy that yellow is gorge and then pink see that pigment it is not very bright so I kind of want it to be brighter I could float some um, of the magenta color afterwards but it is just a background that's the point so I think because my shop towel is wet it's diluting the paint and the color is not as bright definitely not as bright as hers when you see the picture of hers but oops this isn't hers is it it's mine that was way too dense And this has been coated with um, matte medium, actually just um, Mod Podge, Collage Podge, because uh, so it's more slippery. But that looks pretty cool. This looks redder because I mixed the um, the yellow and they turned orange. I think I would do another coat of that. How about I hit it with this and I'm gonna float it. And there's many ways to skin a cat isn't that what they say <laughs> I would never skin a cat but the idea that that's one way to get that look but I'm gonna come back in with my good old angle brush and float it and darken up those edges and I'll show you what that looks like uh, always use water in my brush so I'm gonna go yellow the yellow actually looks nice and bright so that's not an issue and I'm just keeping it towards the edge that's my thought anyway so this the fuchsia is gonna be a big difference see what a big difference that made again it's a background so it doesn't it's like whatever Sarah but I just was disappointed because I love bright color so I had to get that popping and I'm gonna go up to the blue again first because I don't want to put my brush in the pink before it dries and I don't want to stick my fingers in it either. I'm 
and then we're going to get that purple popping too. I should probably dry it. It doesn't hurt because I just don't want to pick up what I already put down. If it's wet down there, I there's a chance that I could pick it up. And if I'm liking it, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to hit it and get that purple popping. And then the next direction tells us to actually do a wash of asphaltum. So we are going to antique it a bit. But look at that. It's just popping now. And we kept it um, kind of sheer in the center. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. You see? So much brighter, even than my originals. So I love it. Now, the only, um, we can't trace our pattern on yet because, like I said, and then I'm going to darken around the edges with asphaltum, but I really wanted that to pop. So let me go get um, my other color of white. And I'll get that beast, and I'm going to gather up the other colors for the um, roses and all that stuff, and I'll be right back. It's coming together. But you know what? These are just so bright now. Ugh, I love that. Okay. But I'm working on the sugar skulls, and this is to the point, I, th I feel like it's opaque enough that I can um, put the details on. So I'm going to use the piece of graphite that I have the most, like, I have so much of this and it's all so worn out that I can't even see it when I trace stuff on. So I'm just lining this up onto the skull area. It's easier to see now, which is awesome. And then I'm going to put this under and just trace lightly. I'm going to try and push gently. Oh, am I in the shot? Try and push gently. Uh-oh, something moved. Let me make sure it's in the right spot. Okay. Um, gently the heart. I probably won't trace the little swirly lines because I can freehand those. Um, and it just saves you the trouble. But if you want to, absolutely. Like there's a little leaf here. I won't even trace those because, I mean, I don't need to trace all this stuff either. It seems pretty self. Okay, I definitely want to do um, the mouth so that I'm I know where all that goes. And these, like the line comes up. I think I'll be able to do that. These little um, comma strokes I'll be able to do the heart and then the mouth. I definitely want to have these teeth. My, my other sugar skull doesn't have any teeth. Well, he doesn't even have his bottom jaw. And um, I guess that happens though and the bones just they disconnect and they could get lost. So but I think that's pretty much all I need. And you can always check like this. You take it and you just go like that. But we'll see, I tried to be light. But I like that. That's enough. Because I can make the leaves and those swirl lines. Um, all right. I'm going to remove that. And then on this one, is there more detail that I need to add? really I think I'll be able to oh there's leaf there's a leaf here that I never traced which I don't really need to trace but you know it's easier to find everything I did I made one mistake which it's it's corrected already but I when I was uh, coloring in my flowers I made the top right one the lighter color like lavender and I made this one the darker color and I really didn't like it. I just didn't like the way it looked. Um, so this one was actually, and then these two were lighter and this one was dark and it definitely didn't look right. 
So I like the way it is like this. Now I don't know what color, there's a leaf here and a leaf here. I know the centers of these are yellow. So I'm gonna take my brush and sh because it, her yellow is the, um, the media fluid acrylics, it's, it's a wash. So she says a wash. So I'm just adding water to my regular craft paint. And it, you get the same effect. And because I've undercoated, they call this undercoating, the centers with white, it'll be more opaque and it'll give a, it's brighter. I got it on my purple. What else? Um, but yeah, that's about it. I think I ended up finding um, antique white and light ivory, and they're basically the same thing. You can inter intermix those. Um, because when I did my second coat, it was it's basically the same color after all. Um, that wasn't a wash. And what else? I think that's basically. So yeah, I just grabbed. I have the pattern on my iPad. I downloaded it so I could see the color pictures, and I just picked colors that were similar to the pictures and that's why I love a pattern packet too because you get so many um, um, examples you know of the piece and you can see exactly how they do it so it's just nice to have um, so I have, I'm going to do another coat on these two purples of three purples actually because I did change the color I like it better though Okay, babe. So now you can tell it's coming together. Like I have no idea what color um, green she used. But look, here's my other sugar skull. I haven't tried basing this in. But um, I just, I love that I'm going to have wooden ATCs. I'm so excited. So I'm um, going to give these, you know what, I might as well just do it now. So, and make sure you shake, my paints are old, and I went looking for like a lighter colored purple, and I found this one is called, this one's Pansy Lavender, which one, oh, this one, Lilac, and it's pretty full, it's new, but it just hadn't be, been shaken in a long time, so it you have to make sure everything gets mixed into the paint, or else it's not going to be good. So I just had to, I squirted some out, but then I shook it up and really made sure it was mixed, and then I redid it. And I'm using, this is an old round brush, but it's got a flat top to it, kind of. It doesn't really come to a point, so I need to invest in some good um, flats. But I'll just do another coat of this. What did I do? Pansy Lavender. So pretty. I love it. These colors are really pretty. The pink I used is called Hydrangea Pink. It's a super soft pink. But um, we're going to shade everything in a minute and it'll be popping. I like saying that. I keep saying <laughs> Got to get it popping. Like I'm some type of hip hop person, but I just mean the colors um, come, they get brighter. I'm sure you understood that. And I'm not, I don't, you don't have to be as neat. This is about, this is two to three coats in now. Oh, I got to do my little guy in the middle. And oh, and she had me do a thin coat of the Prussian blue inside the cavities of the eye sockets and the nose socket so that's why that's looking a little different and yeah you can't really see the background it's it's nah it got all covered up the original piece is a much bigger substrate it's a phone stand so I just want to look up I'm gonna put a little more color around this eye socket just right here Straighten out that line. And I'm going to look up what color green 
I have so much on my desk, so let's see. The flowers. I could use anything I want, but okay, so she's got it shading, deepening the shading. Yeah, and she doesn't even have it on here, the color for the um the leaves. Shade the flowers with float to the following. Float a highlight on the tips of each petal with three small C strokes of warm white and add a few lines of warm white. Base the center's warm white. Shade over the yellow with persimmon and deepen with a thin float of asphaltum. Add white dip dots to the right side of the centers and asphaltum dip, dot, dip dots. Okay, so it's got to be here somewhere. I don't think it is though. So we're just going to do, um, I'll do any color green I want. Um, it looks like it's pretty dark. I'm just looking on my iPad. It's a darkish green, so it wouldn't be my go-to. I'm going to pull, I guess, light foliage. Light foliage is still kind of dark. And then I have dark forest. Dark forest might be better. No, it's too dark. I'm going to do the light foliage. And when I shade it, it'll be... Um, And I'm just going to use this number two round just because I can um, get into this little area. It seems dark, but it'll it'll show. definitely will show up on the skull part. So you have to do at least two coats to get it, depending on the color. But see how like nice and opaque the yellow looks because we put the white underneath. When you do an undercoat, red is that way too. Red and yellow both, if you undercoat them first with white, you get a much um, truer and brighter red, I've found. And a lot of your our artists that do pattern packets are on to that as well. They know that little secret. And the pearls look so pretty. All right, I feel like um, I think I'm opaque enough that I can go ahead and start shading. My pink, I think when you add all the shading and the highlighting, it's going to um, bring everything to life. I want to look for my pink eraser. See, I have this whole bag of erasers. I have a pink eraser. Oh, here it is. And I like to use this to get the tracing lines off. So I'll come in real quick. I want to show you something. So if you look around the edges of the pearls, for example, oops, sorry about that. You can see the tracing lines. And this is dry, so I'm just going to gently erase around the, the pearls. And the line will disappear, and it just becomes paint. So anywhere you see tracing lines that you don't want them, now would be a good time to take them off. So just around this edge of the skull. Because I don't I don't always paint over them. I guess I stay in the lines. I'm gonna get these pearls. Um he looks fine because I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have to paint this. But yeah, this is this looks really good. I'm so excited. It's gonna look so much better too when we shade and everything. All right, let me do another little quick coat of green. I tend to do my second coat oh, a lot more hasty, but I usually keep a Q-tip nearby because if you just push, you can push the paint away. Um, Q-tips are a very good tool to have in your painting, decorative painting box. Alright, so I'm going to gather up some more stuff and clear my palette. I have a lot of paint on my palette right now and I'll be back. Alright, um, I can't tell which one I like better right now. Anywho, um, I'm starting to paint the details of this one 
but I have this one all ready to go for shading but I just wanted to show you when I trace the roses on there's roses down here right here I traced all the lines like the detail lines and I don't need them because I'm gonna take that color which I'm using country red and I'm just gonna base coat the entire thing kinda like uh, when we did the um, I want my round this one uh, when we did the skull and then you come back and add that the details and stuff so I'm just gonna go into my red and after this is based, I'm going to, um, so it's basically all this, this whole thing that I already put the detail lines on, but I'm going to go over. So you got to keep a Q-tip handy. Like I just went out of lines, but I'm just going to tuck it back in. I thought that this was a leaf, but it's actually not. So all this is just going to get based with this red color because that's the roses and even if um see you know what i should have done it with white i'm gonna do it let me take this off and show you so this is a baby wipe hopefully my green won't come off too but let's just take this off um got my sugar skull face a little red but I want to show you my white lines turned um okay I can still see it I'm gonna do an undercoating first of um, white or I think it's either antique white or let me just uh oh I had a water bottle and it fell off my desk and Kirby got Kirby found it. She loves crunching on a water bottle. Alright, so I'm going to go into this light ivory first. And guess what? It's going to make my red pop so much better. And then we'll trace on the detail lines. And shade everything. But I, I just wanted to point that out because as a new painter, you don't understand that initially. You just are just going with the flow and you're going to um, trace everything on all the time. And it's just not necessary. You can take it step by step and um, add the detail lines on top of. So it goes in layers, in other words. You just want to get the bottom layer first and then build up to the top layer. And yay, so this is going to make it much easier to get that red to be red. All right, so I think that's good enough. I'll let that dry and let's go back over to the other sugar skull. And uh, what else could I fix? Anything? That's good. Oh, actually, I wanted to just put my centers. Oh, well, I don't even have it out. Those two centers are yellow. <clears throat> when I, another thing that's really cool when an artist, when you paint an artist designs a lot, they tend to use the same colors a lot. So it's, it's really easy. Once you have a palette of their colors, you can use it over and over and over because they tend to stick with those colors. All right, and I think the, um, T, I have this one on my phone. All right, let me go to this one then. So I'm going to shade now with, and I'm going to go to my picture so I can see. I'm going to do the pink one with Royal Fuchsia. I don't have the colors that she used, so I'm just using what I have. That's what I would suggest, especially if you have a lot. Now, if you're a beginner and you don't have a lot, just get what they want, and then you'll build up your... Um, palette colors you know so I'm just gonna corner load into that uh, I think it's called whatever fuchsia royal fuchsia hopefully it's dark enough if not I'll go back with like Mendicino or something and I'm gonna do the pink one <clears throat> and just like I did 
I've done this before you take it and you just go up against the center and I like to pity pat my floats and when you're doing a flower it's cool because it'll kind of give it a little leaf or a veiny look to it almost so and I'll erase those petal lines but I just thought I'd put them on there so you can kind of see where I'm going up oh, I'm not even in the shot but look how it brings it to life. I'm going to pull my camera closer. My tripod was just, um, I could pull it with my legs, but I'm just using an, a half inch angle brush. And you want the darkest color up against the center and let it fade out toward the top. And I think I'm going to use, um, oh, well, wait, she told me to use the Prussian blue for the blue flower, which I happen to have. And I'm going to use the diaz, diopsazine, dioxazine purple for both the purple ones. So one's lighter and one's darker, but I'm going to use the same color. Again, put the color up against the center. really would be shaded up against the pink petal too because it's under the pink petal so there would be like a shadow but look how it brings it to life I can't take it it's so awesome oh, it'd be nicer if you could see it right to stay in the shot. It looks like this will be dark enough because I picked this purple color. It wasn't what she had uh, used and you know I just wanted a darker tone than the other purple. So um, I used what I had and didn't really consider that this was going to be shaded. I can always darken it up with like soft black or something. But I think it's popping. You know that's my word. I'm hoping I'm in the shot. Sorry. It'll show up much better on the light color. <clears throat> and I'll stay in the in the shot this time. So right here. I'm just putting this on and then I'm going to take those uh, lines off. Do this little guy inside the eyeball. Again, it's all up against the center. And if I get it on the white, I just take it off. not as dark as I'd like and neither is the pink but I kind of like the pink I think the pink is pretty um, and I should have been shading I'm going to shade around the skull as well with asphaltum it's a brownish color and just um, underneath everything I'm going to try and, and just take this purple off that got on there and stick it up here because the, the flowers would be casting a shadow onto the top of the skull right that looks blue 
Um, <clears throat> the other side of that purple one needs shading. I ordered a new half inch angle. I'm so excited because I want to see what they're like, those squirrel, faux squirrel. That looks good. And then she has shading <clears throat> like in these little, on the tracing you can see the lines too. So on the tracing, there are these lines next to the eyes and next to the nose. So I'm going to put a little float of this color there to give it like an indent, indention. Is that a right word? So I'm going to go under the eye here. And in the temples. So kind of like right here. I don't even know if I'm in the shot. And then, where else? On the jaw a little bit. See there's like this little V right here. Or a little indent there. So I'll put a little float like right under the nostril. It's a little big because that's how I roll. I, I go big. I'll take it off. I'll do it again. I'll try to be more gentle. Um, because she has shading here as well. These little, there's little lines that go like here. I'll do it. I'm going to zoom out a little because I can't, I can't stay in the shot when I'm that close. And you can see me when I'm doing just fine. Um... So right here, there's like a little jaw, like break thing here. I think that looks good. Sure, sure. let me see. And then it goes along the bottom. And does it go along the sides a little bit? Might as well, like right here. Doesn't this just bring it to life though? And I'm gonna do a little bit on this flower centers. I think I'm gonna go along the side of the leaf too. kind of screwed it up. <clears throat> Alright, so I was going to do the flower centers. Where did she say to do it? Let me look at the... I'm going to do it on the left side of each center. So over here, I'm in... This is so cool because it's like in miniature. It's an ATC. Two and a half by three and a half inches. I'll darken that pink one. I just think I didn't have enough paint on my brush. I like things dark. That's my preference. I'm going to put it along the bottom of this one. And along the jaw, the jaw of this one. And I'm exhausted right now. My back has been hurting me a lot today. But I can't stop and I'm sitting a lot like I'm sitting obviously in my craft room but um I can't I just want to keep going so I keep toughing it out I had Joe give me a rub down a little bit and I just like darkening it up okay so the pearls also have like a little bit of shading. I want to see if it's the same color. So let's see. Apply a coat of 
pearls. Pearls. Here we go. The I'm sorry, I can't find. Shade each pearl on the left side with a thin float of asphaltum too. And then highlight on the right with white. So let's go down the left side of all these pearls with a little bit of the same color. And watch it pop. They're going to pop more when I put the white. <clears throat> There's like a little bit of blue here. It's driving me a little crazy. I don't know why they're blue. Um, Alright, so I think my flowers... Blue got on this petal too much, and I, I gotta, I'm going to make it pop anyway. So let's go back to the flowers. So we did our shading, and then we're going to do the tips um, with three C strokes of warm white and then a few lines of warm white. Oh, cool. I see that. All right, so it wants me to do warm white. And then we're going to outline everything and put dip dots. So cool. But I want white, white for, this is called titanium. Oh, that's light ivory. Here's my white. I'm going to use white for the pearls. But I can use this for the um, flowers. So she wants you to go like this. So little, um, did I erase the... Here, let me erase these lines first because I don't want to keep painting over them. They're harder to take off if you paint over them enough. They get harder to erase. So, Alright, so she wants you to go like this. Like three little, like a, a C stroke, C stroke, C stroke. Oh, that looks so good. Do you need me to zoom in? Can you see what I'm doing? I think you can see it. So we're going to go one, two, three. Mm. That one didn't really have three, but it looks fine. And then, you know. Am I doing this to all of them? Yeah. I am. It's just coming together. Of course, you'll be able to see it really much brighter on the blue. Um... I won't put it on the other one. Let's do the purple. That's going to be really bright, isn't it? So, the more you can see it, the more like careful I'm being. Sort of. As careful as I get, really. And it'll calm down, and if it doesn't, I'll go back in with the shading color. Because, yeah, this is looking a little crazy. The, the purple one's looking a little too, like, defined. So I'll go back in with the shading color, and I'll calm it down a little. But I'm going to keep going and do this light purple one down here. Oops, plus I stuck my finger in the other one. We have to do line work and everything, so don't think we're done yet. There's a lot more to come. I have to add um, 
the shade my leaves so I think oops you know what we didn't do the little one inside his eye I could get a little more washy too so it's not as bright but boy that brought that to life didn't it let's see I want to see if we can really make the um, pearls pop too so this is white white this is called titanium white and I'm going to do the left side of each pearl and let's see what happens there. Eh. They look about the same. Right? I mean, that wasn't that exciting I kind of don't like something going on there but I'll fix it all right I'm gonna come back when it's done the other thing is I'm gonna be doing lines little thin thin lines with the green which I need to get out more and I was you know I painted these leaves on here and I don't have a small enough little flat brush to, so I just painted them in. So in other words, I went like this. I just took and did the best I could to make it look leafy. So I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put one on here. There's a leaf here too. I'm just gonna put one like right here, maybe a little bigger. But I would like to do these just as one strokes because I like. Um, the look of them and they're easy I'm just gonna make a little swirly there cuz and I could put like green over here too but I think we're good <clears throat> I think I could highlight the center see I just keep going I am try I try not to make my videos too long but it's impossible I think I want to add I want to shade just to show you how we can tone down this purple one if I go back in with the shading color it will um, kind of stop that highlight from being so like liney yeah, it still is but it helped a little I'm going to do this one too And then <clears throat> oh I wanted to show you let's do this red and then I'll go away and finish off camera I have this red and I'm just gonna go over the entire area where we did the white and it right away the red is red already Red is red already. And then when this is dry, I'll trace on all those little detail lines and I'll float all the different petals on with um, shading and highlighting. And it, it's really fun for me to watch it come together and change before my eyes. But I'll do it off camera and I'll come back and just show you guys the finished piece. I'm doing this with such a thin brush, I definitely will tend to get a lot more ridges because I should do it with a flat brush, a bigger flat brush, but um, as long as I go back and paint out the ridges, like get rid of them, I'm alright. I just had this in my hand and never switched brushes. Alright, but that red is red, see? That's all we had to do. I'm just painting out the ridges. I'm trying to. And what else? Um, the eyes look like I need to block them in because the, the background stenciling is showing through. Um, but anywho, it's getting there. So I'll be back. I'm going to finish them off camera and show you the finished piece. Alright, I'm back and 
These are so cute, and last night I was so exhausted, I my back hurt. I, I find that sitting at my craft table for too long really gets my sciatica. Anywho, I spat, this one's done. This one's spattered and finished. I'll zoom in. I love it so much, and I don't know if it's the colors or, you know, a lot of times that's what attracts me, but he is such a cool ATC, so very happy with that. I cut out, or I actually, I put one of the little, she puts, um, she gives you on the pattern a little word that you can cut out, which I feel like is so an extra bonus, but see, Dream Inspire Create. I just chose to get Dream from the Tim Holtz Chit Chat. And then on this one, which I just put a coat of um, uh, Mod Podge on top, so I'm just letting that dry because I'm going to spatter, but I wanted to show you um, me spattering because I use a spatter brush. Now look at the spatter on here. It's very fine. I don't know if the camera's even picking it up, but I think it's about, it's like three different colors of spatter. Um, and I like the look, but you can get, a vi you know, different um, splat sizes when you use like a fan brush or something like that. I use this brush and this is specifically a spatter brush and I have had it for a long time so I don't know specifically. I probably got it at a trade show one time. So here it has this little barrel. This is by Low Cornell. And that's really all I can tell. It's got spatter all over it. And you use this little barrel with um, a piece of wire attached to it. So you once you load the brush, which I like to use a brush to load it, and I'll show you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spatter this guy. Um, but as you spin the bristles then, it releases the spatter because you, you kind of launch the bristles. See how it, it's like that? Okay. So that's what I use, and that's how you get this really fine spatter. Um, and like, I just love it. I love it. I'm so looking forward. This is going to be... I'm going to do this again and um, hopefully my jelly roll pens, which I like the way my line work turned out and I just used my Uniball Vision, but I did order the gel pens that she recommends and I actually, I used um, my Micron for something and I can't think of what I used my Micron because I did use my Micron 01. Oh, for my hearts, I went around the hearts with that and I went around the rose. I outlined the whole roses with the micron and it worked. So I'm thinking it'll be a much fine, because I don't love how the teeth look, like I would have preferred a much thinner line is all I'm saying. But other than that, I mean it's super cute. So I am going to, and then I just um, put the black chit chat word create, because I just thought it it blended in better. I like it better. All right, so two I'm gonna, she says to use three different colors, which I think I did on the other one. Kirby's, Kiwi's feathers, hi. Kiwi's feathers are flying. So it says spatter liberally with warm white, Bahama blue, and black. So I am going to get some, I'm just using antique white. And that's really going to show up when I do this because, oh, excuse me. Oh, I wanted to show you something else too before I forget. This brush I left out last night. This is what I was so tired, and this is what I la was using to load my spatter brush because I like to paint the ends of the bristles, and I left it with paint, and it's a little hard as a rock, okay? But all is not lost. Let's try it. This is my pink soap, which is what I always recommend for to, um, what is it called, to like condition your brushes. So when you're at a class, you would just dress the brush with a little bit of this pink soap and then when you get home you can wash them so I'm just gonna leave this to the side kinda dressed in that and see if we can um, come back to it at the end and uh, hopefully it'll it'll work that paint out I also use that on my clothes because I did get some spats on my clothes some like I'm just very hasty alright so let's get him so I'm gonna do warm white first which is antique white I'm using and like I said, I like to um, I like to put the paint on the brush with. Um, I'm just going to use my big angle brush. It just 
So I'm going to get water on my brush and go into the paint wet, like really keep it wet. You don't want it too thick. And then I just put it on the tips of the brush. And I don't know if there's a specific way to load this, but I, that's how I do it. So you can see it on there. Set that down and then I'm going to spatter. Oh yeah. But I don't want to get too crazy. I do love the look though. And make sure you go high and low. And how you hold the brush helps too. All right, that's enough. I think that's enough, but let, let me go in. So you can see the white. What other? She said Bahama blue, which I'm getting low. So I put out a, a, lot, a little too much paint. I'll try to go a little less. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm getting my, I'm going to rinse my brush and just get water. Oh, you know what? We got to rinse the, um, the spatter brush too. So I just keep sticking everything in my, I'm going to clear off my desk before I work on these other two. And I know this video is long, but maybe you can, you know, it's, it's just how it is when you do real time. Now, I think some people might just go like this in a puddle of paint. But for whatever reason, I've just over the years established this little way of doing it. So I just get a wet puddle and kind of paint it on the tips. And it's been successful. So, you know, I think it's a little neater. I don't get paint all in the... Okay, so let's do a little bit of this. I, I think this puts such a fine coat on there that you can lose some of your pattern. Like I, lo I don't really want it to be too much more. I think that's it. Ah, uh, because you, you have to go black. But because I have a coat of, um, I'm just going to leave it. I was going to take some off because, I mean, it feels like it's just too much. It's like clouding up the whole but I did coat the whole thing with Mod Podge first so that you can, I can kind of take a Q-tip and, all right, I'm just going to do a little bit of black. I say a little bit, but I never do anything a little bit. Um, the highlights on the rose and the heart is this Hot Shots. It used to be called Hot Shots Fiery Red, but it's just neons now. And look how popping that is. So popping. Love it. Okay. So black. But see, this is how I left my brush last night. It was coated in the um, spatter color. So let me just put a teensy bit of that. Okay, that should be enough. Rinse it off. But I'm going to clear my desk a little bit more. I have so many things going on in my craft room at the moment. I have all my happy mail that's still not ready to go. I sort of have it kind of. Then we're getting new carpet. The 10th, Joe said, but he thinks it's tomorrow, which is not the 10th. It's Monday. Anywho, um, so I'm going to have stuff all over my house, and I hate that. It's very, it's not um, inspiring when I have a cluttered area. I get it makes me too um, anxious. And we can't have serenity when there's anxiety. <laughs> so hopefully that was enough because it didn't seem like it really... We'll be able to, oh yeah. And if you hold it further away, you probably get smaller if you go closer. All right, that's enough. So there it is. It's just subtle, the black. But I can see it on my sugar skull. So here they are. I think I'll take a pic of these and post them on my Facebook page. I'll give it another coat. I may use varnish too. I have, um, did I leave it out? I have this Ceramco satin varnish, and I really liked the finish when I did these. It just gives it a nice shimmer type shine. Although the Mod Podge is just like a flat, I kind of like that too. Isn't this so cool? So this is an ATC card. I guess I should paint the back and sign my name and stuff. Maybe I'll paint, I could use gel pens or something to, um, this one does look a little, like you can't really see the roses as much. I love it. OMG. Yay. Okay, that's it, guys. This was long. So I may be back, though, if my hip isn't bothering me too much. I'll be back. 
right? Thanks for watching.